technicians are quite ready. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Okay. You're good. All right. All right, folks, test review. So tomorrow, test, 8.30 to 9.30. Allow an hour. Close book, close notes, all of that jazz. Close phones, computers. If you need any reference material, I will provide it, such as a thread chart or something of that nature. There will be no manual drawing on it, so you do not need your manual drawing supplies. The test will have four areas that it incorporates. Two of the areas deal with threaded fasteners. When we talk about the threaded fasteners, I'm going to break that, like I mentioned, into two areas. One area is going to be over identification. Can you identify basic standard components of a fastener? Guess what that might look like? Yeah, bolts. <laughs> <laughs> That's bolts, screws, heads. No, your worksheets. <laughs> Sean, I haven't seen yours yet. Have you had a chance to get that video? Uh, I don't have the. I didn't know there was a video out on it. Yes, there is. Um, okay. We're going to put that on the web. Somebody recorded it. If not. Yeah, I put it on YouTube and it's on the class. Is it? It's on the drafting website? Okay. Did you watch it per se? I, I saw your little note that it was on there, but I didn't watch it. I don't watch it yet. I'll check it out. Uh, if the quality is not very good, come see me, Sean, today and grab that video. You have to go to the library to do it. It's an old VHS stuff. And you'll want to turn that in so I can get it critiqued and back to you. The second part of the thread portion will be more on the concepts of threads. So, so, and we'll kind of look at this here in a minute once I'm done with this, but uh, we're talking thread form, definitions, um, thread note, all of how we're going to display it on the drawing, our standards, these types of things. The third part of the test will be on the very first lecture we did this semester. Okay. And that was the working drawings chapter, chapter 20. But we also brought it some additional information in chapters 2, 3, and 4. Remember where we talked about the engineering design flowchart? I guess I should really call it a problem solution flowchart where we did problem identification, brainstorming, modeling, prototyping, these types of ways companies solve problems. We also went into some management techniques. How do we make sure parts are up to snuff? We use some quality control. How do we get the client involved? How do we get our capital costs down? These types of things, company processes. The last part of the test will be tolerancing and GDT. I do the test, just so you know, in a couple different formats. There will be some matching, two sections <laughs> of matching. There will be multiple guess. You may be happy there's no true false. I was say true false. <laughs> no true false. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and there is a bonus worth five points.
I'll just give you a hint on the bonus. It has to do with the most important stuff we covered, which was threaded fasteners. At least in my mind, that was the most important thing that most of you will use. I think that's the generics of the test. I'll allow an hour. I think if you totally know your stuff, you're probably going to be right around 25 minutes. So on that third section, because I was in the first lecture, you guys were filming, I, it's chapter 2, 3, and 4 of this book. Mm -hmm. I can read you it real quickly. Okay. Okay, so with that said, let's jump into a little bit more detail to review and open this up for you. Let's start with two, three, and four. Okay, now what I'm talking about here, and let me just point you in the right direction for studying. You want to look at figure two plus six. 2.6. Okay, now before we got into this section, we talked about aesthetic design and functional design. Anybody know the difference between the two? What is functional design? What is aesthetic design? Aesthetic design looks Go ahead, Sean. Aesthetic design looks good and a functional design is gonna function properly and uh, make something easier probably. Okay, yeah, that's pretty close. Functional design, we solve the problem, right? We solve the problem. Aesthetic design, make people feel good about using it so that they'll purchase it. So those are the two. We talked about that. And then we came in and we spent quite a bit of time talking about this process right here. This is the flow chart I was talking about. Where for us to consistently solve problems in the most economic format there is, you're generally following some type of process such as this. Now some companies do all of this, some do more, some do a little less based on what they're trying to do for a deal. But the first thing that everybody needs to do is adequately solve the problem. Guess what? What page is that? Um, page, page 31. Page 31. Page 2.6. It's very similar to the scientific it is. It's, it's almost follows the scientific method right now. Um, those of you that did trig, this is really kind of the same thing we did in trig, isn't it? When, when we lined out our how you do a problem. Um, it works. That's why people do it. First thing is, make sure you actually know what the problem is. Because the first thing that pops up may not be the real root of the problem. Okay, so you've got to dig a little deep there and find that out. Then we come into our preliminary ideas. This is mostly getting a team together, doing what we call brainstorming. When we talk about brainstorming, what's the only rule of brainstorming? There are no dumb questions. That's right. There are no bad ideas. The chance to critique ideas comes later. Once we're done with brainstorming, then we try and pick two or three or one of these methods that experience has shown us is probably going to result in a successful conclusion. They may or may not. We don't really know at this point, but we're going to pick a path to go down. Once we get down that, we move into design refinement. Okay, this is sketching. This is analysis where we break the problem apart, give it to different people, and let them solve the individual problems. We'll probably start in CAD at this point dealing with mating parts, all of this type of stuff that goes on as we solve the problem. Okay. Gets us down to step five, optimization. Okay. We call this synthesis also, where we put things back together. So we might mesh the electronic and mechanical systems of a machine, whatever the case might be. <clears throat> see how it works. Also in optimization, we are generally doing a process called prototyping. Anybody kind of define prototyping? Representation but not the finished 
project product. Okay. Yeah, they are all right. It is basically you are getting a real object that closely resembles your final project, and you're testing. Because if it's very close and it passes, then probably you're going to be okay. You don't want to make you want to make sure that it closely resembles. It you don't have to spend money to get it exact because that's expensive, but you can get it close. Now keep in mind. We are changing the prototyping process through a couple components. We now have engineering software that will simulate much of what we do in prototyping. We didn't really do that in here based on time, but it will do it. We also have processes like 3D printing where we can make close proximities of parts they may not be as strong, they may not be as durable, but they will certainly check fits, flow of fluids, these types of things. Once we get done with that, we're in essence going to the marketing stage. So we're building the part, we're marketing, we're trying to get a profit for the company. Like power engineer says, let's make money. And ultimately, we all have to get to that. Now, keep in mind, if we don't pass the optimization stage, <coughs> we may have to back up all the way into brainstorming and pick another path to go through. We may just say, oh, the electronics don't work, so we move back into design refinement and we fix that area, or whatever the case might be. Okay. But you may be looping through this process multiple times. Okay, so I've spent a little bit of time on that. I don't want to spend as much time on some of the others, but after that we talked about some other components that came later. Um, how do we protect your right to an idea? Patent. Okay, patent. Make sure you kind of know about that. I think it was around page 80 or something. <coughs> um, actually, it's exactly page 80 for it, sir. What's the big thing on patents that you have to prove? Oh, you get it. Time frame. Yeah, you get it in your timeline, right? How do we ensure that parts actually meet the specs that our drawing tells the technicians to make? Yeah, how do, we, how do we ensure that if we put a drawing out and it says this thing is going to be diameter 1, plus or minus 0 0.01, how do we know that it's actually there? What's that process called? Let me give you a hint. It's a statistical method. Some places we don't test every part, we just test every 100 part. Some places we'll test every 10,000th part. If safety is a concern, sometimes we may test every single part. So it's statistically controlled, but how do we do that? What is, what is that term that we use? It's usually a whole department in a plant floor. Quality control? Yeah, it's called QC, quality control. After that, we talked about three management techniques, of which two of them are management techniques, one is more of a documentation type of setup. Remember JIT? Everybody remember what JIT was? Just-in-time manufacturing? That's where they keep every, they don't keep any stock and it gets pulled in just when they need it. That's right. Or bought. Yes, so if we're going to use a bunch of things of plate steel, 
we don't buy them until the day before we, well, actually, we'll probably buy them whenever, but they aren't going to show up at the plant until the day we're ready to use them. So we're trying to reduce the capital costs is what we're doing with that. We had another one called, that was on page 125, by the way. JIT is page 125. The other, man, the other management technique was TQM, Total Quality Management. It was on page 121. And what's, what's kind of the defining characteristics of TQM, Total Quality Management? The client is involved in all of the steps. Perfect. Get the client involved. So they feel like they have some ownership. And ultimately that leads to repeat business. Right. Now the file management technique that we also brought up was ISO 9000. This is right around page 80 again. It's right with the patents, I think it's 81, 82, something like that. It is now ISO 9001. In essence, this is just a file management technique that tracks a part from the raw material through com the completion stage. Okay, I think that's a pretty good synopsis. Now let's just jump to, and any questions on any of that stuff we just talked about? Okay, the other part of that is going to be in chapter 20, which is working drawings. Anybody define a working, what's a working drawing? Yeah, okay. The drawing you can build off of. Drawing ready for production. Okay. Now, when we talk about working drawings, there are generally two, well, three components that go with a working drawing. And now you put this packet together. The first drawings are assembly drawings. So you will put your final assembly and then any sub-assemblies after it as you work your way back to the very first one. Following that are detail drawings or as we know them, multi-views. The complete size and shape description of each part so that they can be built. Does somebody need to see the assembly to build this thing? Not really. They can build all the parts without knowing what they're used for, can't they? But you can just pull a detail out and say, hey, take this to the lathe, turn this out, drill a hole down the center. Now you've made a part. The last part of chapter 20 had to do a lot with title blocks and things like that. I mean, who's hit those enough? I'm not sure I really want to go into that. Are there any <coughs> questions out of chapter 20 that you might have been a little confused Wait, on? The three components were assembly, and detail, and... Oh, the third one is your bill of materials. Bill of materials. And that's usually included in your assemblies. Keep in mind that in the assemblies, we draw everything. We do not do detailed drawings of standardized parts. So if you put it on the assembly drawing, you don't need to put it at the end, the bill of, bill of materials. Well, the bill of materials is usually on your assembly drawing. Okay, now for your entire report where you're pitching to a company, we, we broke it out also as cost, right? So there wouldn't be anything wrong with doing it both on both? No. No, but generally if you're working in-house, like if I work for the sugar factory, I'm on main sugar, um, I do a cost sheet, but it only goes to my bosses. And they say, okay, yeah, we'll spend this money, let's go build it. The people that are going to build the thing, they never know how much it costs. They don't really care. They just, oh, I'm using aluminum. Let me go grab a piece of stock. Let me make it. Go. 
But wouldn't it be beneficial to have it in one spot? Like, the, like my, I had assembly drawing this, and there's some parts on this and parts, you know, kind of have to go through to find all the parts. It, do they like, is it better to have it all listed in one section? Um, somebody do, but that would be a purchasing manager would okay. probably be the person that got that. It wouldn't be, uh, you know, well, we I'm would put it together. Yeah, okay. Okay. We would put it together and hand it to somebody. Uh, a fabricator is never going to see that. It just tears out with it. What's in front of them? Okay. Right. Yeah, we've tried to concentrate that between you know, the design and the construction. And keep in mind there's a whole slew of administrative mm -hmm. tasks that go around these things. Um, know your different types of assemblies. We went over three different types. Anybody remember what they were? There's exploded. Yep. Section. Yep. And then there's one more. <laughs> so one you did actually. I think you're, we looked at your screen at one. Yeah. Outline. Oh, outline. The outline assembly. And the section and outline are typically orthographically produced. The exploded is usually an isometric. Okay, let's jump to chapter 19 and your handout. Are there any other questions? So this is threads. The identification part, we already mentioned, and I think discussed. Know those worksheets. Now, as far as chapter 19 went, let's talk a little bit about some of the things in there that you should know. First off, there are three ways you can represent a thread. Notice I didn't say exactly draw, represent a thread on a drawing. You have the schematic, the simplified, and the detailed thread representations. I'm just going to zip to that first page that shows all of those. <laughs> 